Welcome to our beginner's introductory course on JSON. So JSON is short for JavaScript Object Notation. And in the course, we're going to be running through what JSON is, how to use it, and the benefits of using JSON. My name is Lawrence, and I'm so excited to have the opportunity to present this course to you today. I've been building web applications since 1999, and when JSON came along, I found it was just truly an amazing way to transfer and work with data. It really saved a lot of time, and it's a pleasure to work with it, especially when you're using JavaScript and Ajax in conjunction with JSON. It's so super easy to get that data and add it into your web applications and make use of that external data, that API data within your applications. So in the course, I'm going to show you what JSON is and how to use it within your web applications. We're also going to take a look at JSON versus XML. So if you've been using XML to bring data into your applications, try out JSON. It by far exceeds what XML can do. And also JSON is also readable. So it's human readable, it's easy to understand, and it's easy to navigate through it in order to get that data and that content that you want within your application. Within the lessons of the course, after each lesson or after a set of lessons, I've included source code. And that source code is there for you to try it out for yourself and see what you can make happen, make some adjustments, try the code and practice it and see what you can happen, get happening with JSON and JavaScript. I've also listed out the top resources and links to other JSON APIs. So we're going to be showing you some of the JSON APIs, but there's thousands upon thousands of different JSON APIs that you can make use of that are available online and you can bring them all into your applications. So with the top resources, I'm going to be showing you some of the most useful tools that you can utilize when you're building out JSON data and you're structuring your JSON data. So everything you need is included within the course to start working with JSON. And you can really explore what JSON can do. The course itself, we're going to be looking at JavaScript objects and how they compare to JSON, what the difference is. We're also going to be looking at how we can have multiple objects within our data, uh, how we can have objects within objects, arrays within objects, objects within arrays, and so on and so on. So it can get fairly complex and there's quite a bit that you can do with JSON. Uh, so we're going to be introducing you to all of these different functionalities that are available within JSON and how you can get content and data from your JSON applications. We're going to be using an editor and going through making Ajax calls to various APIs. This course is a beginner's course to JSON. There are prerequisites to basic understanding of JavaScript and even jQuery as well as HTML in order to be able to dive right into the course content. We are going to be moving fairly quickly, especially through the JavaScript and the JavaScript functionality. So there's not going to be a lot of covering of all the different functionalities such as functions and loops, and we are going to be utilizing them within the code, setting variables, console log. So these are going to be very briefly covered as well as outputting into our HTML within the DOM and our focus of the course, which is working with that JSON data as opposed to working with JavaScript as well as jQuery. So we see that we're returning that JSON data from that, our API that we had set up. We had set up a JSON bin. You can pull out that information, make use of it within your application. And then we show you also how you can go through that, that data and find out even more information and pull that content directly into your JavaScript application and utilize it within your application. So when you're ready, let's jump right in with JSON. In this lesson, I want to do a quick run through of the tools and resources that I'm going to be using in the upcoming lessons. So if you're looking to use 
the same tools, you can go ahead, or if you want to use ones that you're already familiar with, you can go ahead and do that as well. So the purpose of this course is to highlight how to work with JSON. So we are going to be using JavaScript and we are going to be doing some JavaScript coding and the HTML is going to be at a real minimal. Uh, only thing that we've done here is we've already set up an index page and we've linked it over to a script file. And then I, what I've done is I've done a split view here, horizontal split. So I've got my JavaScript on top. I've got my index HTML down here at the bottom. And then on the right hand side, I've opened up the same file that I'm using over here. The browser and made it smaller. And then on top of that, it, the browser that I'm using is going to be Chrome. And Chrome has what's known as DevTools. So I've got a separate window open over here for DevTools. And this is just displaying the console. So basically, I can type in some JavaScript and I can see it get displayed out here within the console area and so on. And I can also see my JavaScript here. So I'm just going to type JS, save it and refresh it and we see that it gets rendered out here as well because so, a lot of the content of this course is going to be sitting within the console we're not going to be outputting it into the html we're going to be working with it with just just within the javascript so we're going to be using console quite a bit and this is one of the main reasons why i'm using chrome because they've got really good developer tools and if you're interested in finding out more about developer tools within Chrome, there's a great page here at developer.chrome.com dev tools. And it shows you all of the basics that you need to know in order to get started. And really within this course, we're not going to be looking at a whole lot of functionality from DevTools. It's mainly the console that we're going to be opening up. And in order to open up DevTools, make sure you've got Chrome. You've got a version of Chrome running on your computer, on a Windows machine, Control shift i on a Mac, Command-Opt-I, and that will open up DevTools. You can see here it's available on every website. And basically what it does is it gives you some overall information so you can see the source code you can click on the various elements you can see some of the styling of those elements you can adjust them and of course this isn't actually changing the source code this is just what is visually being presented within the browser so whatever is being rendered out within the browser including all of the dom elements and all of their properties so everything is visible here uh, but again we're focusing on that console tab because this is where we want to run our JavaScript and we want to interact with our JavaScript code. So that's all available within Chrome. Every version of Chrome has this already pre-installed. So if you've got Chrome already, then you're ready to go to open up DevTools. The next thing that I'm going to be using, I need somewhere to write code. And again, we're going to be writing quite a bit of JavaScript in order to render out those JSON files. So the resource, the editor that I'm using within this course is Brackets, available at Brackets.io. So this is a free downloadable application. It's made by Adobe and it's quite good quality. It's open source text editor and it's got a lot of really great functionality. So if you are looking for a new text editor, then I do suggest check out Brackets. If you've already got one you're familiar with, you're comfortable with, then you can just stick with that one as well. So again, it's just having the ability to write code somewhere. That's all we're doing with Brackets. So it's just a tool that we're going to be using. It has nothing, no relationship to the actual code that we're writing. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to look at is CodePen.io. So this is one of my favorite sites to write code and actually see it get rendered out here. Uh, so we can see here that if I write some code here, so right now I'm just doing some HTML. I see it gets rendered out here on the right hand side. I can also do some CSS. And again, I can see it gets right rendered out here on the right hand side. And then I can also do uh, some JavaScript, so I'll do alert, and I probably won't even get to writing the full thing before it pops up, and we see that it pops up. So this is a great place to practice code, to try out different things, and you can see it get rendered out right away. So really excellent resource, and we are going to be making use of it on uh, within the lessons of this course. And there's quite a few other editors as well. Uh, so if you're looking to check something out just to practice, a uh, great place to practice coding. 
Another resource that we're going to be using is myjson.com and this is one of my favorite websites because this basically allows you to store JSON files, JSON data on a website and all you have to do is save it and it provides you a link and then you can link to it from your code. So it's a really quick way to share some basic data, JSON formatted data and pick it up within your JavaScript code and utilize it within your code. So it's essentially a storage bin for JSON formatted code. And speaking of JSON formatting and JSON validating, uh, so this is another great resource. So jsonformatter.curiousconcept.com. Uh, this allows you to copy, paste, or paste some JSON data or a JSON URL in and it checks to see if it's valid. Uh, there's some standards here and templates and then you process it and you can see all of your JSON data uh, really nicely laid out and formatted. So I use this a lot especially if I have super large JSON files such as if I'm looking at a tweet object and I've just got a ton of data and I want to be able to look at it more visually uh, and that's one of the things, one of the benefits of JSON is that it is more readable than XML. And we are going to welcome back. And what we're looking at right now is a JSON object. So all of these values here, this is JSON formatted values. So being returned from the API and I'm using the ICNDB dot com API and basically this gives you the ability to get jokes back and I believe they're all Chuck Norris jokes uh, and so this is a great addition to a website if you're looking to add in to some jokes that you might have on your website and there's a great API here that you can pull this information in to your website so again we're looking at this API and it's returning back all of these JSON formatted jokes and as I said, I'm just going to give you a quick uh, what we can do with the JSON formatter. So we see here, once I format it within the JSON format, we can see that this is a whole lot more readable. And this is really the whole idea of JSON that you can come in here and you can say, okay, well, I'm returning back, so I'm getting a successful type of return, the values, and I've got a number of values that are getting returned here. And within your JavaScript, what you would do then is you would loop through all of these returned values and output them. So you'd have ID, you'd have joke, you'd have categories, and so on. So you could pull this information right back into your website. And essentially that's what it is. It's an easy to access manner, well organized way of storing data. It's more human readable. Uh, and the data is output in a logical manner, which just makes sense when you're programming, you're trying to access it uh, within your programming. So now let's go take a look at how JSON actually relates to JavaScript and so on. So opening up our JavaScript, I'm going to get rid of this part here. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at JSON and how it interacts with JavaScript. Now that we've seen a quick example of JSON, we're going to go jump into and I'm going to show you a JavaScript object. So again, remember that this is linked into a JavaScript file and the big difference between a JSON and a JavaScript object is that the JavaScript object is going to have quotes around it. So let me give you an example. So if we have a variable and we've got something like cars and we know that within JavaScript objects they give us the ability to store a whole bunch of information and we can write it out within this type of format where we can look at it and we've got these paired values so basically what that means is that for everyone we need a name and a value so essentially it's like this we've got a name and then we colon separated and then over here is our value uh, so we can have a whole bunch of items here we comma separate them and we can go on to have our brand or something so we're doing cars and when we always pair it together with a value so we've got our name so maybe this could be a mustang and then the brand could be ford and then maybe we want to do another one for cost and we can include 
different types of data types here. So we can include strings, we can include very, very, very numbers, and we can even include other objects. Uh, we've got arrays, booleans, nulls. So we've got a whole variety of different types of data values that we can include here within our data object. So now we've got cars, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply console log out cars. So we can take a closer look at it within the console. So going out here, I'm going to refresh it, and we see that JavaScript has our object. We've got a brand, cost, name, and then if we want to recall these anywhere within our code, we just separate them with a dot so we could do something like cars name i'm going to go back out and refresh it and we can see that we can pull back those values that are contained within this javascript object now what we're looking at is going to be actually very similar to actually what's happening in here so we could technically we could say something like this and i can take this i can copy it in here save that go back out to our browser window so develop developer tools refresh it and we've got undefined name there because i didn't define that and we see that we've got that same value we can traverse through there we've got categories we've got id we've got joke and see now we can start making actual sense of what's being returned here and we can also see it here within the output. So if we want to output the value and maybe we just want to get the joke, uh, so we know that this is actually uh, containing multiple values. So it's gonna create an array of multiple objects here. Uh, so we need to actually pull back the first one within this array. So we've got an array and our first one is zero. And I know this is getting fairly complex and uh, we are gonna revisit this and work through it in the upcoming lessons. Uh, but for now, it's just important to understand that we can access information within a JSON object really easily within JavaScript. Back out to the browser, I refresh it. We see that we're actually outputting that content directly within our console here and that gives us the ability to utilize it anywhere we want within our coding as well. And it's just that easy to work with JSON. Now just going back, I, I do want to talk about that there are some differences between JSON and JavaScript objects. So notice that within JavaScript, so if we had something like cars so we have cars too, and I'm gonna change this around slightly uh, so that we can take a closer look at that. So with, uh, with cars too, we can get rid of the double quotes if we want. And let's just update this, or we'll just console log out the cars too. So we'll see how that works. So we refresh it, and JavaScript doesn't have a problem with this. Uh, there's another variation we can do as well. And this is uh, something for JavaScript only. Uh, if you're considering that, so this is no longer going to be a valid JSON object. Uh, now this is just strictly a JavaScript object. And the difference really is that JavaScript is more flexible in the way that it handles uh, the outlet output. Uh, whereas with JSON, we got to make sure that we've got these double quotes and we need to make sure that we do use double quotes. So just to finish this off, I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna go over to my validator. I'm gonna punch this into the validator, so go up to here, punch it into the validator, and we see that it uh, doesn't come back valid because strings need to be wrapped with double quotes, and we're missing all of this, uh, these names here as well. So the name values, we need to have those with double quotes as well as the values with double quotes. So they aren't exactly interchangeable, even though they look very similar. So this was really a comparison between JSON and JavaScript objects. And we noticed that within JavaScript, they all work the same way, uh, but the syntax is slightly different.
Welcome back. In the previous lesson, we saw that there is a difference between JSON and JavaScript objects. When we tried to copy and paste our JavaScript object into JSON validator, it didn't come back valid. And that's because we needed the double quotes around that paired value, so around the name as well as around the value. So definitely keep that in mind when you are working with these types of variables and when you're bringing them within your JavaScript. Make sure that if you're just going to use it just as a native object, make sure that it is formatted properly. And if you are going to be able to, if you do want to transfer it as a JSON object, make sure again that you are, that you are formatting it properly. Now I did want to also run through how we can output content. So we saw uh, that we could output content within this type of format, but we can also bracket around it and then quote the, na the named value in order to return back the associated value that's associated with this name. Uh, so we've got the name, when I refresh it, it outputs in the same format. And this is because with JavaScript, we have the ability to make content dynamic. So if, for instance, we had something like this and we want it to have multiple brands here. So instead of just brand, I'm going to put brand one. And then maybe we might have another brand. And I'm not sure uh, if this really applies to cars, but uh, just for the sake of the course here, I'm going to be adding that in. So we have something to work with and to create it dynamically. So now whenever we want to work with that, uh, and what I mean by dyna dynamically is that if I've set a variable to a, and we're going to equal a to one, I can really easily concatenate that a alongside this name here, and I can pull up that value as needed. So let's see if, uh, so first of all, do you think that this is going to work where we've set a value, a variable value of one for A, and then we're concatenating it to brand. So effectively, what we're returning back is cars brand one, which should return back these values. So I'm going to put uh, Ford in there as well. And actually, I probably can get rid of some of these excess ones. Uh, so let's just try this for now. So refresh it and we see that it does work. And so basically, even if I was looping, and if I output that same value here, because I'm incrementing A, so now this becomes brand two, and we should return back the appropriate value for brand two. So again, a lot of flexibility when you work with the code in JavaScript, and when you are working with these objects, make sure that uh, you are that you are outputting it in the proper way because if you were to say name or let's uh, do another example down here if I was to say brand and instead of using the bracketed format if I was to say something like dot this uh, first of all it doesn't know where this this name value ends uh, so basically it's doing a plus a and my question is, do you think that this is going to work? Do you think this statement here is going to throw an error? And if you said it's going to throw an error, you're correct because it's unexpected string. It has no idea what to do with this one. Uh, it's not adding them together. It's not seeing this as one name, although it's seeing it as this plus a, and that just doesn't make sense. And it's not able to return that string value for this. Whereas over here, when we do the bracketed format, then it does work. And this is, again, really important once we're looking to output that content. Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to store arrays within our JSON data. So we saw earlier when we were looking at those Chuck Norris jokes that we had if we had multiple jokes, or even if we've just got one, it's already set up that under value, it's able to create this as an array. So if we go from one joke to two, it's still returning back these same root values, so type is success, and for value, it's actually returning back an array 
an array of, of objects here within here. So we see that within this array, we've got their own, we've got these separate objects here. So we've got one, we've got two, and we can differentiate them because we know that this is the first one that's being returned, and then this is the second one that's being returned in order. So under value, we're getting two items returned. So maybe we can copy this out and we'll take a closer look at it within our script. This will save me the trouble of writing that out with the cars and I can get rid of this stuff here. So let's say for instance, well, let's update this to jokes so it makes more sense within our naming convention. So again, let's go take a look at this in, cl as in closer within our JavaScript. So we see we've got this array, we've got a value, so we've got object one, we've got object two, and then they're both holding a separate set of values. So they've got separate categories, they've got IDs, they've got jokes, and so on. So basically what we can do is we can, if we want to output it as a specific value, then just as we showed you earlier, if I wanted to do type and return that type, I can refresh and I can always get back success because success is just returning back that one value. But if we have multiple values within that array and notice that there's a bracket, a squared bracket, and this indicates that this is going to be an array. So we've got an array for value. So value is an array. And that means that if we want to get that first item in the array, so notice the format is the same thing that any array would have uh, so we comma separate out the values here and these values just so happen to be objects so then we can differentiate and we can grab that information so let's see what happens over here when I refresh the page we see that we're grabbing this first object here we've got an uh, we've got categories which there's nothing in there but that's its own array as well because it's got those square brackets so what this is is this is an array of objects within so this is another array inside of another array uh, so there would be two arrays there one inside of the other and this is where JSON actually can get fairly complex uh, and it can go multiple levels down as many as makes sense within the data that you're trying to pull back and that you're trying to retrieve and there are cases where you've got to go multiple levels in and as you loop through retrieving that data you've got to be aware of how it's formatted within that JSON and again the, the, the good thing about JSON is that it's really readable so you can take a look at it and you can say okay well I've got this object uh, I can return back that first one and then I can take a look at this and I can see that next I can look at my categories and then there's an array of zero so if there's multiple categories in there I could just select out which item I want from my array. So now let's just return back the joke and go back in here within our, our output and refresh it and there's our joke. So we're able to isolate out any information that we want that's contained within our JSON data. Welcome back and in this lesson I'm going to show you how we don't have to use arrays but we can actually use objects within objects as well. So we can nest objects within other objects as JSON data. So let's say for instance we've got people and we're going to have a number of people that we want to return back here. So our initial array is that we've got a bunch of people in here. And all of these people within here, they might have different properties. So for instance, if I've got a name, age, and gender, there's a number of ways I can do this. I can do it within an array, and I can have a number of items there. But this doesn't really work well if we were trying, because we, we have to go back and we have to sort out the value of the item in the array. And for this case, we're actually going to know that each person is going to be an object, and they're going to have particular pieces of information that's attached to them. So let's say for the first person, so person one is gonna contain the following information. And again, this is a nested object. So again, we've got those curly brackets there. 
and it's important always to close those off. So once we open it, close it off so to avoid confusion as we're building this out. So the person one is gonna have a name. So here we're just gonna specify the name. And also within that same object, they're gonna have an age. So then we just specify a value for the age. So I'm gonna make it as a string value there. And next, we want to specify maybe their location, so the city that they live in. And I think this is pretty good for our first item in here. So let's just return back people and see how this looks within our, within our JavaScript. So let's clean this up a little bit. So we're gonna use the beautify feature. And now we're, we can see it's super easy to read. And once again, if we want to update this value, we can essentially use it as a template. So I've got person one, now I've got person two. So we're gonna add in some values, update these values in here so that we actually have a second person there. Ref, uh, save that and now we can go out and we can refresh it and we can see that we've got the two people here within that same object, within that people object, and all we're doing is console logging out people. So essentially what we're doing is we're just typing people there and we're getting all of that information returned. If we wanna be more specific and we wanna see people and we wanna see information about person one, we can then get that information. If we wanna see people person one and we wanna see their name, we can type in, so as long as we're typing in and we're going to the correct path to get that object information, uh, we can return back any piece of that information from that JSON data file. And again, so super easy to read, uh, and it's really easy just to kind of take a look at this and say, well, if I want to return back this value, I just need to know people, person, name, people, person, two, name for the second one, and so on. So we can change this around and we can do people, person name and that returns back that value of the second one and this again this is a valid json object so if we go into the json formatter so i've already added that in there but we can see that it does return that back as valid json and once again really easy to read as well and that's because everything in here all of our paired values have the quotes around it our main value here has the quotes around it and we're not using any arrays as we did over here. Uh, so we have different formatting and different ways of uh, looking and retrieving that data. Welcome back and in this lesson, I'm gonna show you what to do in JavaScript if your JSON information is being returned back as a string. So for instance, let's get rid of this part over here and we're gonna say that this is actually gonna be returned back as a string. So I gotta get rid of all of that spacing here because uh, as we know with strings, uh, we can't have all of that spacing. So I'm, what I'm doing right now, I'm just essentially just uh, manually turning this into a string. So let's see what happens now. So going out to our console, I'm gonna refresh that and we see that we do in fact just have a string. So we've got a bunch of space there and we can't actually utilize this. So even if we tried to do people and if we did person one, we don't get anything back, we get undefined. And that's because again, this is just seeing it as a string and it doesn't yet know, your JavaScript doesn't yet know that this is JSON formatted object. So even if I remove out all the spacing, uh, it's still not gonna make any difference. It still doesn't know. It treats it just as it would any other string with a bunch of content inside. Uh, so it doesn't know that this is JSON yet. So let me show you what we can do where we can set up variable and my object. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a parse of that. So I'm gonna take the content from this string value and I'm going to parse it back as a JSON object. So let me show you how that works. And we're going to use the function JSON parse and basically this will turn that string value so we're going to do the rounded brackets we're going to throw people in there and then instead of outputting people we're going to output the my object. 
So you see what happens now, and there we go. We're back to our familiar JSON format, except now it's sitting within my object. So now if I wanted to see the value of person one, I can return back, I can see the name of that, uh, that person as Lawrence and so on. So this is something that happens every now and then when you're returning your JSON, it's actually not formatted or the JavaScript, the code doesn't know it as JSON. And this is where you need to parse it in order to be able to work with it as you would with a normal JSON object. And this is also really important when you're bringing that content in or if, you're, if you've got some other program that's formatting it and you're only able to grab it as a text file, you always have that option to use JSON parse to turn it into a working object and then utilize the contents of that string, that string that was returned and make use of it within your JavaScript. Come back in the previous lesson, we saw that we can magically turn a string into an object and then utilize it within our code, make use of it again as we would a regular object, JavaScript object. So because we can do this, sometimes there is a need to actually do it the other way around. So for instance, if I wanted to store something as one variable or one value, so I've got all of this JSON information and I'm working with it, I'm manipulating it, I'm updating it. So let's do an update here for the my object. So instead of, so do my object and we'll do person one and we'll change the name of person one to new name. So that will really stand out there. Uh, so next, we can output that as an object. So let's say, for instance, we've got a variable send Ajax, and we are going to be looking at Ajax in the upcoming lessons. But let's say, for instance, I want to send all of my new value into, if I want to send all of this again, maybe to a server to save it and so on. And it doesn't make sense if I've got these really complex JSON objects. What I would really want to do is just create it as a string. So just as it came in over here, I want to package it back up just under this one variable and send it over. So let's see what happens here when I refresh it and we type in send Ajax. So what it's going to do is it's going to try to send it as an object. So again, depending on what you're trying to do, if you want to pick it up as an object on the other end, so on and so on, uh, there is always the case that you might need to save it as one variable. And this is often done, especially if you're saving it within your browser storage, for instance. Uh, that's one really good case when you're saving your entire JSON object, you would want to save it as a string. So let's convert this into a string and we're going to save that and uh, basically utilize that just as that one string value. So this is what this is the method that we use. It's JSON stringify. And I know that's a really fun thing to say, stringify. And basically it converts the value of JSON, replacing values, uh, and it turns it into a string. So let's see now what happens when I refresh it and we look at JSON send Ajax and we see that it's back to its original string value. So it looks the same way as people and essentially it's back to as it was when we initially picked it up with some slight variations where we've actually cleaned it up and removed some of the spacing. So that's been one of the benefits where it's kind of cleaned up that string and removed that white space. But anyway, that's how you get it into one variable name and then you could pass this variable name or store it in storage just as one value. Uh, you don't have to worry about all of the complex nested values that might be uh, within that that one value itself. So coming up in the next set of lessons, we're going to look at some really fun stuff and that's going to be working with Ajax and that's going to be the ability to really connect with external applications and pull in JSON and then you're going to see the real power of JavaScript and JSON together and how you can work with data and bring it into your applications.
Welcome back and in this lesson I want to quickly run through storing it within web storage because I did mention that Stringify is super useful when you're storing an item within your session storage uh, so let me show you how to do that within JavaScript. So first of all we've got our variables all of that information in there we come through we parse that value out so this would be the same thing as if we we're picking up a value when we're loading the page uh, so say for instance we want to output a particular value and we want to reload the page and add in something new into the values so this is where I need to have some uh, some JavaScript here so I'm going to just add in some elements that I could uh, that I could utilize input type equals text and we're just going to use ID and we're going to pick up this value here and I'll just call it my value and we'll put so put our favorite hello world in there and now within the JavaScript so what I want to do is I want to store something to the web storage uh, I want to maybe change one of these names here so I'm going to try to keep it really super simple as much as possible. Let's uh, put this variable in as an object. So we're going to do variable equals document and we're just going to use get element by ID. So we're going to pick that up and put it into an object. Now let's just add our event listener onto it. So the my value and we're going to listen for on change and once this actually gets changed then that's where we're going to run our function. So we'll just do an anonymous function and we're just going to do the script right here within that function. Uh, so what we want to do is and I want to parse through all of this object information so ideally I think what we should do is every time it's changed or wherever that change is initiated I'm going to get new I'll call it new value and we can do this value to pick up the new value of the, the input as it changes and then what we're going to do is we're going to add this as the new value or let's just skip all of that around there and set the new value there and what we want to do is we want to stringify it so we want to save it to we want to save it as essentially something new within our JavaScript so every time it changes uh, we're updating that object information and then we want to update the send JSON and just going to copy and paste that as well. So what it's going to do is it's going to keep updating that value and then once we're ready we're going to store that value and send that into our session storage uh, by setting the item value and then when we come in and we load the page then what we're going to do is we're going to load that value back out of all of this JSON data. So let's see how everything looks right now or how it works. So basically, and we need to open up our, our hello world there. So now we see that whenever we change and we type, uh, it's initiating that function that we set up. It's updating that person and it's updating the person's name. And now when I go back into my JavaScript and if I type send JSON or send Ajax, we can see that we've got that newly updated value in there for name, so hello world, and whatever was typed within this input here. So it doesn't really matter. Every time we update it, uh, we see that it changes. So we've got that new changed value. And what we want to do is we want to store that value. So whenever the page loads, uh, maybe what we can do is we can change the value of my value to whatever that stored value is. So value will be, so what we want to do is return that stored value. Uh, so we need to do a condition there.
And what we're going to do is check to see if there's a set item. And if there's a set item, then we're going to get it from the storage. And the object that we're looking for is session storage. So this is a global object that uh, basically allows us to store content into our session. Our session is every time we open up our browser, uh, that's what our session is. And what we can do, we've got a bunch of built-in methods here. So we can do get item and essentially that retrieves an item from our storage. And what we're going to look for is, I'll just call it my VAL. So it's going to look for a value there. And if it contains that value, then it's going to return that value into the value of my value. And basically what I want to do over here is I want to store the value. So actually we need to pull that information back out of that storage. So I think this is probably getting a little bit more complicated than I'd initially thought, but we need to uh, set that item. So instead of ses session storage, get item, I'm going to set item and then I need to specify what I'm setting. So set item my val, and I'm going to equal that to this send Ajax variable. And then over here, when I pick it up, I'm going to parse that information. So I'm going to parse that value. So we are going to parse through to We're going to parse this value out and then we're going to pick up the my object value and we're going to add in that brand new object value that we have that we've overwritten and output the person one name into the value field. So let's try this out. Going out, refresh the page, hello world. So let's do hello world too. And we did get an issue there. So what we to, failed to execute set item on storage. So let's take a little closer look and see what happened there. Uh, so we're trying to set item there. Actually, I formatted that incorrectly. So I need to comma separate out the values. It's not an equal sign. Uh, so that was one of the issues there. So now let's try this again. So refresh and let's do hello world too. And we can see that now within our JavaScript here, we've got hello world too. So when we refresh the page, we're loading back hello world to back into our input field there. So what's really happening behind the scenes, I know we did quite a bit of extra work here than probably was necessary just to store this to storage. Uh, but this was just to illustrate that we can do a full round trip that actually within the storage, what's being stored is the whole that whole string value. So initially when we come in, we've got a value for people that we're already setting. Uh, then we're going into uh, setting up this object here for this input field called my value. And then we're parsing through people through using my object. And then what we're doing over here is we're setting up send Ajax and we're stringifying that object that we pulled in. So we see that initially, if we kept everything the same, if it wasn't using that session storage, then we would have no, uh, no new values being stored here. But because we are using the session storage, and this is a, the perfect example of why we can use session storage, is that we set this one variable called my VAL, and we're setting that up as the send Ajax. So just to kind of finish this off, what we're doing over here, we've got a condition. We're checking to see if there's an item in the storage called my val. And remember, we're setting that down here. And if it exists, then it's going to go ahead and update the value for my object. It's going to take the value from the session storage called under my val. It's going to parse it because remember, this is a string value. This is all a string value, and that's the only way that we're able to save it within the session storage under one, one name. So what we do, 
same thing that we did over here, but we're parsing the contents of the session storage, which was a string, and then we're outputting it within the myVal. So myVal, again, is linked to this object here. So it's outputting it to that input field and giving it the name value there. And that's where we're able to update this content. Uh, and then once we click off of it and refresh it, we see that that value changes. So you can quickly see also that it is doing that update there. Uh, so basically, we needed another function here in order to store it into our session, and that's what we did down here where we're storing that value. Every time it changes, whatever this changes, we're actually storing that value into the object that we're working with, and then we're converting that object that we're working with. So whether it's coming from here or coming from here, we're adding in, we're string of, we're, we're updating that value in that JSON object and then, or the JavaScript object, converting it into a string using JSON stringify and then storing it back into session. And that's happening every time that we're making that update. So that was just a quick example and I know probably a little bit more complex uh, than I had initially intended uh, in order to demonstrate uses for JSON parse and JSON stringify. Welcome back and before we finish off this lesson, another thing that I want to quickly run through is how we can actually see all of the contents that are contained within here. So I'm gonna just actually get rid of all of this information and get those joke, uh, that joke JSON string that we had been looking at earlier that's available on that API. So let's go over to here and let's pick up 15 jokes. Uh, so that should give us a good large size chunk file uh, so we can utilize that as a JSON object. So maybe we're, we're just going to use a regular JSON object and we're not going to go through all that stringify and all of that. Uh, so let's just make sure that we're able to pull that information in. So refresh it, joke, and we see we've got this object, we've got the 15 objects there, and now the challenge within this lesson is actually to loop through all of this information and maybe output it within our HTML. So we did create that index H output. Uh, so let's grab that output as an object and do document get element by ID. And this is that output value that we have down, down there within our HTML. And this is basically going to allow us to output inner HTML and then equal that to whatever. So now we can go back out, we can look at this, and got a lot of windows open over here. So we see that we're outputting whatever into our code. Uh, so that's actually exactly what we want. I want to get rid of this one. Uh, to avoid any confusion. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to uh, loop through all of those values. So we saw that within the console that under jokes, we had 15 items there in the array. Uh, so they're all structured within that same format. So they're all, uh, they've got jokes, they've got IDs, and some of them actually have arrays there for categories. But we're not going to worry about that one for now. Uh, so let's take a look and see how we can loop through. So there are built-in ways to kind of loop through objects within JavaScript. So we can loop through, do a variable, oops, that should be inside of the rounded brackets. So we've got variable x in jokes. So I believe it was called jokes. And let's just quickly, we'll console log out the value of x. So let's see what happens now within the console. So we, re we refresh it and we see that we're outputting type, we're outputting value. So we know that within value is where all of our contents are. And remember again, over here, we've got type and we've got value and value is the one that holds all of that array information. So we need to dive deeper and we need to do value here. So let's refresh again. And this actually allows us to loop through each one of those items. Uh, so this is really great because now we can utilize this information and output some content. So we know that we've got all of those items there. Because this is an array, so we're gonna need to utilize it as an array. So it'd be different again if it was an object. 
So we can do something like this, and then here is where we can specify joke. So let's take a look at this now, and we see that this is our quick way to output our content into jokes. So let's set up another one. So we'll have container, and over here, instead of the console log, we'll do container uh, plus whatever this output value is here. And then once we get through that, then we're going to do output inner HTML, and we're going to remove out that whatever, and we're going to put whatever the value of container is. And maybe we can do something like this, h1 jokes, close off that, so type out some HTML there, and we should also concatenate this together, add in some spacing. So now let's see what our output looks like. So when we refresh it, there we go. So we've got all of our jokes are listed in a nice, neat fashion there. And of course, we can update this as needed. So we can do something like x plus, and we'll do a dot space plus refresh. We started it with zero, so we should do x plus one. And whenever you're outputting into your HTML, you see that there's always uh, there's always need for kind of fine tuning what we're doing. Parse int. Let's turn that x into an integer instead of a number. And so there we go. So we're able to have one, two, three, four, five, all the 15 jokes really easily listed out on our page. So next lesson, we're going to dive deeper into this and we're going to bring in Ajax. So we're going to pull this feed live right into our HTML code. So it's no longer going to be sitting in a variable. We're going to simply pull it into our JavaScript and do the same thing where we're parsing through it and then output that content within our website. So that's the exciting part and that's coming up next. Welcome back. In the previous lesson, we saw how we can utilize some JSON data that we brought in as a regular variable and we can utilize it within our code. So this lesson, we're going to make things a little bit more interesting and we're going to bring in Ajax. Now, Ajax is a way to do a connection, retrieve or send data to a web server. And the really cool thing about Ajax is there's no page reloads. So your users don't see any difference between that content sitting on your website, loading into it directly, uh, or if it's sitting on another website, uh, it's all retrieving that same data. And this is where Ajax and JSON go hand in hand because Ajax allows us to read that data from the web server and then just simply add it into our HTML page, add it into the DOM, or utilize it however we want within our JavaScript. So I've gone over to developers.google.com and I'm gonna pick out a link here. So this is a hosted library where we've got jQuery hosted. And by far, jQuery is the simplest and easiest way to get access to Ajax. They've got, they've got it really fine-tuned how you can access Ajax calls. That's where I'm going to simply add in the jQuery library and then I'm going to utilize that Ajax call within my JavaScript. I can get rid of all of this and I can really clean up a lot of what I'm doing. Uh, so let's take a look and we're gonna... We're, first of all, let's wrap... We're gonna wrap the JavaScript with the document ready object. And so this is for jQuery. Uh, this is where jQuery makes sure that the DOM has loaded before it tries to access any of the content on the DOM. Uh, so this is one of the things that I usually like to wrap it in there and then put all of my JavaScript in. Uh, you don't need to put everything in there if you don't want to, uh, but it just looks a lot, whole lot cleaner and uh, it gives us quite a bit more usefulness within our JavaScript code. Uh, so we see that we're nice and neatly output here and formatted. And now I can simply link to it using jQuery. So jQuery has a number of ways that we can actually get this data. 
and I'm gonna actually get rid of some of this as well because we we don't need a lot of information that's uh, being output here. Uh, with jQuery, it, thing, it cleans things up quite a bit. So right off the bat, uh, there's a number of different ways to use Ajax and jQuery, and they already have one that is basically allows us to load JSON encoded data uh, directly into our output. Uh, so this one is super easy. We just need to specify a URL. And then once we specify the URL, we can simply load that content directly into our H uh, directly into our our source code. So I'm just going to leave a placeholder there for the URL, and we can set up a function there. And then this function can pull back the data. So whatever data is already contained within there, uh, then it can utilize that data within our code. Uh, so basically. Maybe what I'll do first is I'll console log out that data so we can take a closer look at it. And I can get rid of actually all of this because jQuery is going to do the same thing that we just did but make it a whole lot easier. So let's go back into our web browser and let's sort out where our API is located. So that's the URL that we wanted to use. So let's see now what's going to happen when I reload the page. Uh, we see that we've got our same object formatted the same way, but done a whole lot easier, nice and clean code uh, using jQuery. And so we've got each one of these items, and I'm going to use the jQuery function for that, or I can, I can maybe keep it the same as we did already. And then afterwards, we can, uh, we can uh, update that. So let's just go back grab the URL here of our, our jokes. And we know that when we loop through there, and actually there's another, there's an, there's an easier way to, to do this within jQuery as well to output the content. So while we've got that jQuery loaded, we need to just simply specify the element and then do HTML and then we can pass that variable information into it. Uh, and I do need to set up variable container and I'm just going to leave it blank for now. So what we're going to do is the same thing that we were doing earlier where we're going to loop through all the items in the returned uh, data. So we know that this no longer is jokes, it's data and this again no longer is jokes it's data and now let's take a look at our output and we see that we load that array with all the values and now let's go over to our file and we're loading it uh, so we are actually throwing an error there so let's see what's going on here how come it's not outputting that information and maybe actually i think i need to do that there because uh, it's having a um, it depends on how it's loading that data in, that the output. Uh, so we see that everything is running the same way, uh, except now, instead of having that static content, every time we refresh it, we get a new set of 15 jokes. So that's really useful. And again, you can see how easy it is and how useful uh, JSON can be. And again, we can see that when we go into our console here, uh, we can list out all of that object information and we can make use of it within our JavaScript code. So essentially, uh, that's one of the quickest ways to put to pull a JSON file or JSON data directly into your, into your code. And this as well, this will work uh, seamlessly no page reloads it simply goes queries this file and then once it returns all that puts it into data and then loops through it and that's why I had to move the output within that same function here that get JSON function because when it's sitting outside then uh, the value for container it loads from here and then it doesn't reload that same uh, statement so that's why moving it in that allowed us to output it within our HTML page Welcome back, and in this lesson, we're going to look at CodePen. So previously, we saw how really easy it is to use Ajax to pull in some web data. 
Uh, so let's take a look at this and I'm going to add in an external library. Uh, so they have the ability to add jQuery really quickly. So that uh, basically that's added jQuery into my source code. And as you can see, so if I wanted to do the same thing that I've got over here, and this is where we're going to start out this lesson where we've got this output here and we don't really need a whole lot for CSS. Most of ours is going to be JavaScript code. Uh, and then we can loop through all of that JavaScript code and then simply output it. So saving that and this will give us access to the content there. Actually what's happening here, so when I go into the console I see that um, or I need to go into inspect console and I can see that what's happening here within CodePen because CodePen is HTTPS and this link is HTTP, that's where we're having trouble loading it. So as soon as I change it to HTTPS, uh, we can see that everything loads as before. And this is another thing to keep in mind when you are using AJAX calls and you're calling out to JSON sources, make sure that the protocols are the same. So if you're on a secure website, make sure that you're calling over to the secure source of your API and returning that information back. So always keep that in mind and it's kind of good that we uh, saw that happening because this is also something that commonly happens that you might not, uh, might not necessarily uh, take notice of at the time that and you might be wondering well why isn't it loading and that's the reason always make sure that they're compatible HTTPS and HTTPS. So essentially, that's how you can bring that into CodePen. And now with CodePen, we can play around a little bit with what our content is and what's coming back. So I'm going to show you how to do that in the upcoming lesson. Welcome back. And in this lesson, we're going to look closer at what we can do with jQuery. So we saw that there was a jQuery method called get json and this was nice and neat return back json information so you might also see when people are using jquery that they do an ajax call and i know the format is going to be slightly different here so the ajax and this is so i'm going to get a bunch of errors here until uh until we update this code so basically what's happening here is we need to specify what some of the values that we need to pass. So first of all, we need to pass a URL value. So we're gonna use that same URL that we used here. And then these are comma separated. So it's essentially, it's treated as an object. Uh, we can do type and we can specify either get or post as types. And then our data. And we can do data type which is again really ideal for JSON. So do that data type as JSON. So we know that we're returning it back as data or as JSON data. And then lastly, success. So basically success fires off once we've had a successful connection and that's where we can run this function that we had here before. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm grabbing it properly. And I'm going to remove that and hopefully tidy this up. And uh, yeah, we see it working. So, uh, so yeah, so basically this is another way to do an Ajax call. And this is probably one of the more common ones that you might see uh, when people are calling over to JSON to get a JSON value. Uh, they're specifying all these values here and they're doing it within this object uh, type method in, AJ in jQuery, an Ajax method. Uh, so and and we can also post as well. So if we needed to post content or we needed to send some data, we're able to do that as well with this Ajax call, as opposed to just the get JSON, where we we're just looking to get some JSON information. So if you're looking to just uh, just get some simple JSON information, you can use either one. Uh, either one is sufficient, and you can see that they do both work within that same format and within that same way. 
Welcome back, and in the previous lessons, we've been looking at this Jokes API. Uh, so there's a lot of good resources to get additional APIs. There's tons of these APIs out there, uh, whether you're using social media, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, they all have APIs, and you can connect with them within all the same way in order to retrieve data back and utilize it within your web applications. Now, some of them do require author authorization or authentication, and this does take a little bit more time uh, as you need to uh, apply the proper OAuth or the auth authentication in order to access the API. Some of them you need to set up developer accounts in order to access the API and so on. But at the end of the day, for the most part, these are all JSON APIs. So all of the information being re retrieved back is JSON information. So even if you go to something like Twitter and you can see that all of this information, that tweet object is an actual API, uh, JSON formatted tweet. Uh, so you can take a look at the tweet objects. You can uh, log in or sign in with your Twitter account and access the developer documentation and set up a developer account here as well. Take a quick search here into the API. Uh, so basically all of this information gets returned back within the API and you can see that uh, we've got specific location and we can really be specific on what we're returning back within that uh, specific tw Twitter API. The Twitter overview, uh, so essentially we've got the tweet object, and as you can see again, this is all JSON compatible, JSON formatted objects, uh, all of the user information, everything gets returned back as a JSON object, even if we go to users, same thing, all JSON objects, and we can see that um, there's a lot of information contained within there and there's multiple layers within any tweet object. You can see a better example of our JSON object. Uh, it's just a ton of information, all JSON, and essentially you sort through it within that same format when you're pulling it all back into your JavaScript. So we've got our JSON example for a video, and you can see there's multiple layers, multiple arrays there, multiple objects that are nested within other objects and so on. And then the idea is to pull it back into your code and, and sort through it and output the content that you want to use within your application. So the best way to become familiar with working with JSON is to take a look at all these different APIs uh, and try it out for yourself, bring it into your application. Uh, so we can try another one here. So there's the Yahoo Weather. So I'm not sure if this is still working. And again, this is JSON response. So the endpoint is this one here. And they also do have an XML. So you could change it over to the XML to see what the difference is. And really, uh, to me, XML is never really readable. Uh, I've never really liked the way that it outputs. And it always seems like there's a lot more uh, there's a lot more in there than that needs to be in there whereas JSON always looks nice and clean to me uh, and that's why I'm always a big fan of JSON so let's try this one here and of course we're not gonna loop through them and we don't have a data value but uh, we can take a look within the console and we can see what's coming in here uh, so within the console itself, we see that we've got all of this information. This one, this example is probably better served if I bring it back into here uh, so that we can take a closer look at it within our own dev console. Uh, so we see that we're returning that, that object and this one has a lot of layers to it. So we've got results here, we've got channel, we've got astronomy object, so sunrise, sunset, we could pull all of that up, uh, Yahoo weather, uh, we've got last location, and so on. So there's a lot, just a ton of information, even wind information, direction, uh, location, item, condition, image, uh, so we want to pull back an image, we can pull back a weather image and so on. So all of this is accessible, again, JSON formatted, and now it's just a matter of once you ret retrieve this information to make use of it within your JavaScript. So this one is probably a little bit harder to kind of go down. Uh, as we know, we've got the query and then we've got the results. So we've got data, query, we've got results. 
and then in results we have another layer there called channel and then within channel we have image and then item so really quite a lot uh, maybe this one is better served as a console log and I'm not gonna uh, loop through it and I'm gonna get rid of that so data results and let's take a look at this now so we've got that channel uh, so now next we need to do channel and I'm going to refresh it again so now we've got uh, units we've got title so we have access to all of this information so let's say we wanted to get access to the title we can just simply do title and then we can return back that title. And again, is there's however you wanna whatever information you wanna pull back from the API, uh, they're all gonna be structured differently. All of these JSON objects that are being returned uh, in all of these different APIs are gonna be structured differently. And that's where it, it is become super useful if you want to see how that output looks uh, really nice and neatly. So we could paste that in, I could copy that, go over to the JSON formatter, paste that in, and this will output it in a more readable fashion. Uh, so we can see all the different layers, all the different parents, and then go down until we access and get to the information that we actually want to take a closer look at. And so just going back here uh, within The GitHub repository here, uh, just again, a ton of information. Uh, we've got uh, Netflix roulette here you can access. And again, depending on whatever type of application you want, whatever information you want, there's just a ton of stuff here. And this is all coming back as JSON data. So if we go over to SoundCloud, we can see the SoundCloud API, access that and get uh, that information returned back. They always have, most of the websites will have uh, basically the basic structure, the data structure of the data that's being returned. If they do require an OAuth or an API key, a lot of times they allow you to register as a developer and then you can get those keys and then get access to the content as well. Welcome back and in this lesson I want to wrap up all of the different things that we've been looking at in the previous lessons. So we started by opening up our editor, we looked at how we can write out and how we can write JavaScript, which we saw was very similar to JSON. So J JavaScript objects were, were similar to what JSON objects look like, except there were slight variations where with JSON we had more restrictions. And that's where we looked at the JSON formatter in order to utilize that JSON formatting and make use of that. Uh, so over here, also another th resource that I want to make mention of is the my myjson.com. Uh, so this is essentially a resource that you can create JSON data. So we don't need to necessarily go over to uh, look at all of these APIs. We can create our own API. So if, for instance, I did want to get access to that particular API, we can see that now within that console, we're retrieving back that should be HTTPS. To actually grab that bin value there. So I'd put the wrong one in there. Uh, so we need to make sure that the bin value is in there to get the actual API. So we'll give it a second to load. And again, maybe we need to um, we need to output this within our own format. So I'm going to bring this one back and simply output it there. Get rid of that one there and refresh the page. So we see that we have that same type of access to the JSON, the JSON object that we created at the my JSON bin. 
So it gave us the ability to create a bin to store some JSON information. And it's not, it's not going to be dynamic. It's not going to be changing like those other APIs that we had looked at. Uh, but this is a great place that if you do have a JSON file and you do want to work with it within your JavaScript, you can go over to there, add in the bin, and then link to it and get access to the data that you've, con that you've set up and you've stored there. Uh, so great resource as well as CodePen and the JSON formatter. There's a number of different th JSON formatters and validators. Uh, so this is actually one of my favorite ones to use. Uh, we had we were using Chrome because Chrome allowed us to have dev tools, which gave us a whole bunch of power and able to see what's happening within the console and behind the scenes with JavaScript. Uh, another resource that we were using was the GitHub Toddmodo. So just a ton of JSON APIs here that are all uh, with all the nice links here. Uh, so if you want to just practice, play around with them, I do I, I do advise check that those out and uh, take a quick look at these different APIs, work through them and pull in some information into your web application that's available in these APIs. Uh, and then next we had looked at the hosted libraries. So with Google, Google does uh, these CDNs here where we've got hosted libraries. So if you're looking for any type of library, uh, there's jQuery, but there's also a bunch of other ones as well. A bunch of other popular libraries, including Angular, that are available here that you could simply bring these libraries in and access all of the built-in functions available within these libraries. I've included all of the source code that we used within the course as well as links to the resources. So I do encourage you to go ahead, try it out for yourself and see what you can do with JSON. And I guarantee you, uh, the more you work with JSON, the more you're going to be amazed at how easy it is to work with and how easy that data is to pull out into your web applications and make use of that data within your applications. Try it out for yourself and see what you can make happen using JSON and AJAX within your own applications.